We're going to preview the other card too, right? Yes. And yes. Welcome back. Welcome back, baby. Um, UFC Fight Night Hill versus Walker review. And we got a preview of next. What is, next, is that next week? This weekend? Okay. Okay. We got, we got some good. We had a really good card coming up. Um, we'll do a little bit of a review of this, this Saturday's action. Had some good action. Um, man, that. Okay, so that that car that um sorry the preliminary card has some bangers. Did you get to catch the um active card at all? No. I saw a main card, but uh, the main event of the prelim. What was the guy's name? Onama and the Benitez? Gabriel Benitez? Yes, the AKA Shane Velasquez protege. Oh, he's. Oh. Hmm. He got a lot of. He got a lot of fights, too. He got uh, 33. 33. 33 matches. He's twenty two and eleven. So Jesus, this Onama guy is just a prospect. He got ten fights, and that combo he did on him was more than uh, ten punches. Hmm. That's all I gotta and say. <laughs> I was really looking forward to um, Jessica Rose Clark and Stephanie Edgar more for Jessica Rose Clark, and let's just say. I lost money on that one because I was I was betting with my eyes and my heart. I mean, you and um, well, I bet her twice. I bet her by herself, and I bet her in a parlay, and I lost. Obviously, lost both. So, yeah, she. I was excited because I, I was excited for her as a prospect. I still am. Um, but what I do like about these free cards for me is I get to see a lot of uh, up, upcoming talent, some maybe some hidden gems here and there. And I'm going to have to pay more attention to Stephanie Edgar. She looked good. Yes. Women's bantamweight weight's kind of heating up, dog. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it definitely needs it right now too. Yeah, the ladies they were rough with me this weekend because I also had uh, Diana Belbita. B- 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 well, is it um, Belbita? Belbita? Yeah, I don't know a single one of them. I didn't even know. Mm-hmm. I didn't even well, see that fight. Well, I'm not gonna lie and tell you I know. What I just see their pictures, and they both look like they're not fighters. They look like, <laughs> they look like uh, one of them dating app site pictures or something. But they <laughs> they probably mean and vicious. So I'm not gonna judge them off that. If they probably. see, they got they got some hands, and I don't want no part of that. No respect to both. <laughs> I saw. I want to say I saw Paula DePaula fight once at least. Yeah. But other than that, I really don't know, and I don't remember much about that fight. So she looks like a contender series girl. Yeah. Um, I saw Diana the last time I saw her. Um, she fought last year. The last time I saw her, and she came through actually for me. Um, she was on that Stan Hagen Dillashaw card. All right. So, What's your face? Do you remember? Uh, Hannah Goldie or something. It was a it was a decision, but she ended up getting the dub. Um, yeah, I just I felt good about it. Like the 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 chick she fought, like the Gloria chick, had like it was like she had like ten fights. And she was like six and four. So I was like. Mm, I might be able to just like slide this one in, and I got a little greedy. 
and I ended up paying in dollars. Um, there was a lot of action. Well, a lot of the, a lot of the fights that were scheduled on this card, at least like four of them got canceled because this was supposed to be the battle of the Raphaels, right? No, that's like fit. Didn't get canceled. I guess it got postponed. Yeah, but, but it was supposed to be this weekend. Well, last weekend. It was supposed to be yeah, last weekend. Yeah, yeah. Like but I guess they needed more firepower for the pay per view. That I makes mean, sense. The main event was good in itself. We'll get to that, but it was good in itself. Yeah. Well, um, Alir Latifi was supposed to be on this one too. Oh, what happened to him? Canceled. Two oh five, right? Or is he fighting at heavyweight now? Heavyweight. Yeah. All those old school lightweights are fighting at heavyweight now. It's kind of interesting. And they're getting old, man. It's hard to cut weight. Yep. Yeah, all those light heavyweights are like, mm-mm. I'm just gonna eat now. Oh, hungry. <laughs> I ain't talking about for a title shot. I'm just hungry. Have you uh, noticed that the heavier weight classes haven't had much success in that though? Like, we've seen a lot of lightweights jump to welterweight and have a lot of success. We've seen, you know, welterweights jump to 185 and have a lot of success. But when 205ers go to heavyweight, they don't really do very well. And same with um, 85ers to 205. They don't do well. Well, 85ers to 205 have had success. We've seen Santos compete for the title, Tiago Santos. And didn't I? Am I, I might be wrong. I don't want to say this. I'm looking it up, but I'm going to anyway. Fuck it. I I, I didn't. Um, what's his name? Uh, Return of the Mac. Anthony he did Smith. Up, but he went. There's two former champions at 185 that moved up to 205, and they got bopped. I yeah, so Rockhold. in and the quickest fashion. Well, Whiteman, Rockhold, and Adesanya. Yeah. Adesanya didn't get bopped. He just got outside. He yeah. got laid and prayed. And then, but there's been some success too Um, at 85. Guys going from 85 to 205. Obviously, Silva did well. I think he's undefeated at 205, right? No. Uh, he beat for, er- for me. Cormier, okay. I mean, oh yeah, that's a tough out. That's like his kryptonite. <laughs> that was past his what? prime and kryptonite. just out of his league. Kryptonite. Well, that's four days yeah. off the couch. But he also yeah. he but he got he beat James Irvin. That's when he was in the prime at two hundred five. He Horse beat Griffin, Griffin. Griffin. Bonner. Bonner. That was you know he had prime time Anderson. Yeah, right. That was pre white. That's fair. I'll so give it got, a 50-50. Yeah, so like, it's, it's been some success. And uh, like I said, um, the two other guys have both um, both Anthony Smith and Tiago Santos competed for the title. After I forget that Anthony Smith used to be an 85-er. Yeah. so it, it wasn't very pretty then. But there still hasn't been no light heavyweight guy that went up to heavyweight. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Or my mm-hmm. Only only Cormier, but he was going between both because well, he yeah. he had the two or five title. Randy Cortez, Randy yes. Cortez, he won the title, and then he also um so did so, so did Cormier. Oh, no, no. He won Randy he won the heavyweight. It's not Tour, it's Cortez. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Extreme Cortez. Yeah. Cortez. Extreme Cortez. Cortez. For real. Yeah, really this man cool, found bro. it. He, he's the only guy that, like, had great success. And Cormier. But and Cormier did it first. Yeah. I hate to hate on Captain America and all that, but, like, he did beat the most lackluster heavyweight division. That man was. But awesome. he did it. And he was old when he did it, so that man was twice your size. <laughs> that man's twice everyone's size. Yeah, Brock's a monster. 
Uh, Funny story about that guy, uh, Tim Sylvia. My homeboy told me about him doing a job, and he was like on the roof with him, and he met him, and he said he was a total dick. So I don't know how true it is. I'm just going off my homeboy's word. I believe it. You remember that stupid little dating show that they tried to do for UFC fighters a long time ago? A dating show. Yeah, there was like a blind date show that they did a long time ago with UFC fighters. It had like Tim Sylvia on it, uh, The Punk, uh, Josh Thompson, gotcha. and and Tiki, Tiki Golson was, was in it. show called? I don't remember. I think it was like a European show, but like they set them up on blind dates and it came up again recently. This is the only reason why I remember it. Because Josh Thompson was talking about contract disputes, and he was talking about how he had a girlfriend at the time, and they wanted him to do a dating show. And he was like, no, I can't do that. I got a girl, blah, blah, blah. But they were like, you should do this. <laughs> all, right, all right, let's get back on that. So uh, the middleweight, where's the middleweight action, man? Uh, Joaquin Buckley took on Abdul Razak Al-Hassan. That was a barn burner, man. That was a damn good fight. Um, I had Buckley in this one. This is one of my rare wins on this card. I had a W on this one. Um, really good scrap. Um, I was nervous because traditionally speaking, when you have two guys who are like knockout artists, um, it always something gives. Like they both were either get a little bit too, you know, Tentative and it don't end up being the kind of fight you expect, but this was this was a great this is a good fight. Buckley showed a lot. Buckley showed me a lot, but I definitely wasn't um I came I, I wasn't disappointed in Al Hassan's performance either. Did you see that one, Mark? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw that one. Definitely saw that one. That's basically when I started watching. Because <laughs> I just oh, so got home in, from work. <laughs> he jumped right in on the main card. Yeah, I jumped right in on the main card. But, yeah, Buckley impressed me in that fight. He showed that he's not just a knockout artist, he's not just this flashy guy. He actually has some good game planning, some good technical technique during this, and he knows how to mix it up. And he impressed me a lot. And Alazan, his, his striking is dangerous. So I, I was happy with it. It was a good scrap. I don't know if I'd really call it a split decision personally, but hey, it was close enough. Yeah, I don't want to get kicked by that guy. That that that, that, that dude, he don't skip leg day. You guys did not mention one thing about his corner man, the dude, uh, Detroit Urban Survival Tactics. I don't even know if that's the acronym for it for dust. But well, all I know is if you go up against this guy, bro, you getting dusted. So you gotta stand for dust, right? That's, that's what it is, right? Yo, what's his name? Dale? Bro, I don't want no smoke with Dale. That's the videos, bro. You see the videos? He disarmed he's everybody. Yeah. everybody. Bro, everybody. He's unstoppable. the man is unstoppable. Yo, he said you could come to his gym and try to beat him. Yeah. You gotta pay. But you could try to beat him. It's not Yo. free. It's not free. But go see him at his gym. I don't know where it's at. Probably in Detroit. I would Yo, hope why so. You, why your boy be dressing like uh he dressed like he one of them cops from Raccoon City? Yo, he's the dude <laughs> from Mortal Kombat 3 with the fucking nightstick. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> that's, yeah. him, that's him, bro. I don't even know the striker. That's his name, bro. Yeah. That's him, bro. In real yeah, life, him. I don't want no smoke with him, bro. I seen the video. You know, you know, I laugh about it. I make fun of it, but at the same time, if Anderson Silva can walk out with Steven Seagal, then we can have this. I mean, boy, Buckley said he wasn't happy with the promotion, so he promoted himself. He and why right not thing. attach yourself? Oh, he he did, did the right thing. Let me get some. <laughs> Somehow, some way, I'm about to promote myself. UFC, y'all, y'all cool and all, but check this out. He got dust. He got dust. Well, 
Yeah. It's a it's a good move to get more eyes on his fight. He said he got like 15k followers after the fight just from this. Hey. I I'm 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 all for it. I love it. I'm, I love that from of the homie, man. That's good. I mean, he does have one mean. of the best knockouts ever. Like he's, he's right. probably like top three right now in knockout in UFC history. I feel like. Oh, yeah. So I don't know how he didn't get 50K followers off just that. <laughs> no, he did. He was like, he went viral for that. Yeah. Well, definitely did. I, I, I made sure he was viral. I sent that to go. every Tekken fighting game group I'm in and was like, yo, check this out. It's the Lee Just Frame kick. And sure enough, it was. And I'm pretty sure that junk blew up after that from there and then other things and some more. So he should have got viral at, after that. That that was probably the nastiest knockout that we've seen in like five, ten years. Who holds Since your eye of Hall killing that guy in a... I can't think tough. of any better... Yep, you. I was gonna say you. That's the only two highlight reel kicks that like knockouts that I can think of is Uriah Hall in um the Ultimate Fighter, and then Edson Barbosa versus Terry Adam, Oof. where he made him do the. Kicked that was the only two. Yeah, I'm saying like, his career. like kick wise. I mean, Cerrone got some nasty leg kicks. Not that. You know what I mean? But yeah, but not flashy like that. In the last five years, like that. That we had. In the last five years, this man held his leg or his foot and then ate the other foot. So it's like, come on, bro. Dog. He did the absolute worst thing that you should do in that situation, said, and it worked. Oh, <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> but yeah, Buckley, I think going forward with him, he's probably not going to get the fight he wants. He'll probably get another contender fight for him. He's not going to move him in top 15. Maybe 15 at most. What do you guys think? Um, let me see. Let me look at that division. Ryan Slager. Yeah, I saw that. But I'm just going to move on. It looks like he's, he's got the greatest face in that frozenness. Oh, now he's just dancing. It's starting to come back. <laughs> Am I still frozen? Ooh. They moved my boy up in the, uh, the top 15. Okay, that's who Buckley should fight. Jack Cat. Who? Oh, Ralph Kahn. I don't know. I think uh, Ralph Kahn's going to go a little bit higher. Bro, we, we decimated this man's name. Shaf yes. Kahn. Me and you both said his name poorly. I will say it properly. Shavkat Rachmanov. But isn't he a welt or a welterweight? Oh, he is a one eighty five. You're absolutely yeah. right. I was. I see. I thought he was a one seventy. I mean, he has some interesting matchups though in the top fifteen. Like, I was thinking like Kevin Holland. And I'm like one seventy now. Yeah, Ugh. Kevin Holland would be a nice fight for that. That would be a good matchup in my head, but Kevin obviously Harris he's trying one seventy now. They did, yeah. Oh yeah, you you right, you right. Uh, popped him during the pandemic. Brad Tavares isn't a terrible fight right there either. I wouldn't mind seeing that fight. That's a good matchup actually, because it's gonna be a lot of banging. Let me bang. Or maybe a tune-up fight for Chris Weidman whenever he comes back, but that might be a while. So, Brad Tavares seems like the most interesting in that situation. If they want to kill uh, Buckley's hype, they'll give him Weidman. Yeah. Or if they want to like test him and see how good he really is, they'll give him Weidman. One or the other. Yeah. Mm. Weidman poses like one of those matchups where it's like, okay, you know he's gonna wrestle you. Make the fight dirty. He's gonna clinch you. What are you gonna do? You got explosive hands. So how good your skills? That's how I see. Mm hmm. And how good well, your wrestling really? Yeah. Hey, let's move along. Uh, 
Jim Miller. He's old. He's winning. <laughs> Him or Avanti, hey. bro. What's up? Well, Jim Miller just took the, took the lead for um most for most all all time um fights and Who wins. wins. Who's in between? Him and Arvlowski. Cowboys have them? Uh Cowboy uh he was tied with Cowboy for most wins in the UFC. But he ain't, he ain't tied uh, no more. He ain't tied no more. Now Cowboy dropped down to second. Yeah, Jim Miller got a knockout too. Beat him these rookies. Bro. Yeah. And that Nicholas Mata kid was is tough. Like he's supposed to be like they were less that was like that was supposed to be his fight, like his coming out party. That's how it always is, man. You know the UFC fuck people up. Spoiled. Nah, uh, Jim Miller said, not on my watch. <laughs> make, make your debut somewhere else. Shout he said, you want to know what experience does? This. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was nasty. Jim Miller, yeah. He's trying to fight to the UFC 300. He might make it. Yeah. You guys Baby, wanna, you know what? I'm going to root for him. You guys want to take a bet on it? On what? If Jim Miller on. makes UFC 300. Ooh. I think he will. All right, all right, all right. I, I, this is the bet. This is the bet. He has to be fighting at UFC 300, like a fight, and fight on it. It can't, it can't get canceled or him hurt or something. You know what I mean? So he has to fight on it or after. One or the other. That's the only way to win. You know I'm saying if he doesn't make it, you obviously win. So it's the over under. Does he make it? The UFC three hundred or after? I'm gonna take the under. I'm gonna say un- under the UFC three hundred. But well, we're at two seventy two now. One currently, but yes, we're going on two. Under. Yeah. Taking under. I'll take the bet that he won't be. Loser he- buys a bottle for whatever pay per view we got. Deal? In. I'm, I'm going in. with the under. Right. If we all go under, we just, we'll discuss. I'm going over. Okay. okay. So you think, he, wait, you think he'll make it um, past 300? Past, past 300, 300 or? Past. Okay. Yeah, because I feel like he's staying. Active enough to where he's doing two to three fights a year right now, and he's still at a 500 rate right now where he's still winning half his fights. And he's not sitting there trying to fight the best of the best anymore, he's you know, he's accepting his gatekeeper status. So, I think that they'll keep feeding him prospects and he'll make it. I think he'll be the first lightweight to fight at 41. (laughs) <laughs> all right, B. Me and you'll discuss where we think how far he'll go. Right for our our. <laughs> Mark's got yeah. the under, but we got the under, so we'll discuss it. I'm gonna we'll say like two ninety five. So let's 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 see. Damn. Two ninety five. No, 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 no. We ain't gonna discuss it now. It's gonna be somewhere in that range. I don't think it's gonna right. be three hundred. No, that's like. Yes, it's three years from now. I he's make so it. I was thinking like six fights from now. Can he make six more fights? I think he's gonna make it. If he makes it, incredible. This nah. Oh, he's been fighting forever. Think about that. You know, forever. I thought they were, you know, I could be wrong about it. I thought they were gonna let let um, what's his name? Jeremy Stevens fight longer just because of his exciting fights. But. Maybe. Um, yeah, that was that was a strange release, but I wasn't shocked by it, I guess. Cause like I wasn't shock shocked, but he's one of those it doesn't really matter if he wins or loses because he has exciting fights type people. You know? But eh. Well, Kyle Dawkins, um, the younger brother, uh, is he the younger brother of uh, Chris Dawkins? The heavyweight, heavyweight Dawkins. Well, 
technically speaking, this was catch weight, Dawkins, because they fought at a catch weight. Uh, Jamie Pickett and Kyle did. Um, Kyle took the submission in round one, last second, too. Came at four minutes, 59 seconds of the first round. Um, he's putting on, that's two in a row. That's two wins in a row. Bounced back nicely from that. That lost. Um, he had decision loss. Did he? Is uh, they count uh, win or whatever it was against Kevin Holland as a win? Yes. They counted as a win, even though it should have been a no contest because of the clash of eggs. On the on UFC site, which we know is a little suspect. It says other. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. On, on my, I apologize. It says draw slash other. So yeah, he's then he's bouncing back from um, the Philip Hall's loss to get back into the win column because his other bout got canceled. So he was supposed was, to rematch Kevin Holland, right? Kevin Holland decided to drop it down. Yeah. Which that would have been a nice fight again because it was a good fight until, you know, the clash of heads. Even though Kevin Holland was talking to DC the whole time. <clears throat> He's a character, man. I'm, I'm, I want to see how well he can do at 170 pounds. I think that's a good weight class for him given that he doesn't really cut much weight for 85. He didn't cut weight. Right. Yeah. And his diet. I think it'll be fine. Listening to his diet. What diet? Yeah, that, that's what I mean. No, no, like, like lack there. He's he has a diet. It just ain't a good one. <laughs> I mean, yeah. What fucking buck nuts from Bucky's? Nah, he's eating like McDonald's, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Trash. Can't do that shit, man. At the high, at the highest level, man. You gotta, you gotta be focused. Everybody's trying to get that squeeze out that little bit of edge, whatever little edge you can get. And you, yeah, he got to get somebody that's uh that cares about him to let him know what's up. Main event, bro. Like, listen, we want to talk about. We talk about. We see like all these meteoric rises in the sport, and we get super excited about prospects when they go on winning streaks and they look flashy and they're. They're kind of storming through a division. This is why I don't get too high on these guys until they start getting some real competition. I know everybody thinks that, you know, because, you know, Chemayev and Rob Khan have been just like blazing through the competition they face so far. They think it's going to be an easy route to the title. But we learn time and time again that there's levels to this shit. And once you get into the top five, top ten, all that, all that hype. I mean, so sometimes the hype turns out to be true. You see, you get the Israel Adesanya's, and you know Kamaru Usman's guys who live up to the hype. But then sometimes those hype trains get derailed. And damn, Johnny Walker was riding some steam like two or three years ago, where he was just—he looked like the next thing at two hundred five. And right now, man, he's he's struggling, bro. He's he's finding himself on the wrong end of of uh some losses. This fight was interesting. Did you get to see this one? It was pretty quick. We didn't see this. Oh yeah. That I was think amazing. This was a round one meme. <laughs> where, where do you guys want to start, bro? What what I said initially was raise the roof, but after further <laughs> review, this man did the standing worm. Dog Johnny Walker caught caught the Holy Ghost. Caught the Holy Ghost. Yeah, what got punched? Punch. Yeah, he choice? gave a whole new meaning to pop and locking. You know the stadium wave. Yeah, yeah bro. <laughs> bro, I just don't know, man. This dude's I so talented. 
here's the here's the thing about Johnny that confuses me. You 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 would think that because he's so loose and so like he's always he looks like, he looks like he's having fun in there, like pre fight like walkout. Oh, he looks walkout, super though? super relaxed. Very no. No, did not see the lap dances. I missed. Yeah. Wait, hold on. You trying to say you trying to say Johnny Walker got OnlyFans? Yo, his hips, his hips don't lie, bro. Oh my. But when he took off his shirt, oh my god. When he was getting the fucking uh the Vaseline, Vaseline shit on, on oh my, like all that, bro. <laughs> Uh, he was fucking straight humping that whole time. Please, I mean, he Man, was a Chippendale dancer or something like that, right? I, oh, I no, don't know. He was. He was. He used to wear the uh, the cufflinks and the collars with no shirt, like, straight up. <laughs> like he was the male stripper. I'm not even joking. Like, I up. mean, hey, <laughs> if that's what he was doing, that's what he was doing. He Make was that doing, money. But he was fighting on the. Good. You should start dancing on the side again. If you dance, you dance. And, and he need to get that TikTok up. I'm telling you, bro. Man, you got maneuvers. Is it is this is it too early to say he's he's a little chinny? I think he's chinny. It's not too early. I think, I think it's a little early to say it. Makes more early mark. I think it was. I think it was good reads on Jamal. I think I'll, I'll credit Jamal for that knockout more than I will him being chinny. Mm. But at the same time, I, I do have to take back some of the things I said before because I have a whole new perspective now. Uh, before I used to say that Johnny Walker needed to tighten things up, straighten out a little bit, become more tactical versus. So showy. So I thought the move to training with Kavanov was going to be great for him. But I'm now on the opposite side of that fence where I think him becoming more game plan oriented and more calm in the cage has been a deficit for him. And I think that it's not a good match for him at that gym. And I think he needs to make some big changes now. I don't think that he needs to be as flashy as he used to be, but he needs more aggression back in his style. He he didn't have any, and Jamal just walked him down and showed him what's up. Well, I that's I, we had this discussion um, a, a few episodes, but actually last season we talked about this about Johnny yeah. Walker and, and his move, and I just I, that's I welcome to the dark side, yeah. Um, I, I just I think that him being tactical doesn't work for that's not a good move. He's explosive. He's very like his unpredictability is what makes him what gives him the edge because he's long. He has a lot of power, and when you can't see the strikes coming, that's when it makes it a lot more dicey for you for the opponent, uh, especially when it, as it pertains to Johnny Walker specifically because he has some and like if he can keep you guessing. He can land some really good shots. And what we're starting to see is in firefights, he can get hurt and taken out. Cause uh well, he didn't he didn't engage a whole lot with Santos, and now we see why. And then he, he ended up getting the w, the L for, for that one. But after after that was on the heels of getting knocked out by Corey by Corey Anderson. And you got there's levels to this shit. Um, <laughs> and now this one, man, like he did catch a mean right hand to the temple that made him, it looked kind of goofy because it looked like, <laughs> it almost looked like an overreaction, like on a movie, like he got hit and then he sprang back yeah. and sh- shout out to Jamal Hill for, um, the good follow-up shots to make, to, to make sure he got the dub. But I mean... <laughs> This this fight was more about to me. This is more about like Johnny Walker taking a, a huge fall because that was that's a this is a big loss for him. I think so. 
Yeah, I do. This definitely because Jamal Hill only has one loss in this division when one no contest. So that's he's a prospect that's on the rise. And he's in this, I think he's kind of in the same spot as Johnny Walker was where he went before in his earlier in Johnny Walker's career, pre Corey Anderson and, you know, these last two other L's. They pushed him hard. Though, Johnny Walker. Well, he was like the next big thing. Like he, he, he looks the part he's flashy. He's definitely um, marketable and has that charisma that you want. And he got the highlight real knockouts. Like, what he did to Khalil Roundtree was beautiful. That elbow in tight, dropped him, pfft, curtains. That was beautiful. And then the next two guys after that. Mm-hmm. Cleaned him up quick in the first round. Is it Misha Serkinoff? And, uh, um, I can't think of the name of the dude. Led, Ledet, Led, oh, Ryan Spann? Led dude? No, 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 no. That was his last fight. Correct. Uh, Correct. His name? Yeah, Ledet. Ledet. Yeah, it's like Ledet. Yeah. Like he was. He went on that tear, that quick three round, literally all three over, first round knockouts, like, early first round knockouts too. Like Fifteen he was seconds. Everybody, and then he ran into Corey Anderson, and he pieced him up, and kind of the I. Train got derailed. Went in, had that uh fight with Krylov. It went mm-hmm. so so. You know he lost that one two in a row. Then he bounced back with a quick knockout with uh Ryan Span, Superman. Mm-hmm. And they were thinking like, okay, Santos, perfect fight, right? Yeah. It was hard sparring. Okay. Yes. It showed that he had potential. To hang with the best. And Jamal Hill said, no, I'll play him. Check me out. <laughs> bro. Literally. That was brutal, bro. Um, Where do you think, wh- what's next for Johnny Walker? He needs to rethink his training, like I was saying earlier. I don't think that this is going to be devastating to him. Like, it, it's definitely not where he wants to be. But I think... He's marketable enough to where he's he'll be fine, and he's only twenty nine, so he has a lot he has a lot of room to grow. But I do think that he needs to make a change. I don't think flying out to Ireland and training out there is a good idea. I think he needs to find something more local and something that works for him. Something that will he needs a coach that will train him to his strengths, not try to change him as a fighter like I originally thought. Where's his residence? Do you know? I know he's not Brazilian 100% and all, sure. like, where's his residence? It would make more sense for him to, like, train. Hell, move to Florida. Move to South Florida, bro. Like, go to ATC. Mm. I do wonders for him. He'll probably love him with open arms. Boy, like the dance and stuff, you know what I mean? The nightlife, you know, you know what I'm saying? He be fitting right in. <laughs> now for Jamal Hill, what do you guys see next for him? Like, it's open, bro. Like besides Paul Craig, right? That's who he last lost to, right? Or is it Jimmy Cruz? What did he lose to? Craig. Who um took his arm? Paul. Paul yeah, Craig. that was Paul, Paul Craig. Craig. Paul Craig mm-hmm. took his arm home. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So I wonder who Paul Kirk got next. Well, I mean, Hill. I mean, for Hill, I think I don't think he's gonna get a rematch with Craig anytime soon. No, no, no. They I don't think he should. For like when both contenders are like making their way to the title, and it's like bam and bam, one and two, or one and two, two and three. So like yes, like a for the title contender stuff, or at least an eliminator. What do you, I see, um, hmm, let me see the 205 division. I think Johnny Walker is about to switch places with Jamal Hill in the rankings. Jamal Hill's going to 10, and Walker's going to 12 or lower. 
Yeah. You know, what would be interesting to me, in all honesty, and I actually like this matchup a lot, I think Dominic Reyes is on downfall. Let's see where he's at. I think that'll be a great test for Jamal Hill. Reyes versus Jamal Hill. That'll that'll be a good test to see if he can hang with the top of the division. And like I said, Reyes is on kind of like a downswing right now. So we'll see where Reyes himself stands anymore. I like it. Um, unfortunately for uh, Reyes, he's on a a long losing streak. So that's, that's probably not going to be great for him. But he is number six. Um, mm-hmm. Paul Costa is in the in the light heavyweight rankings at number six. Well, number where is he? Number nine. Up above, right above uh, Jimmy, uh, right above Paul Craig in the. Uh, this is this isn't this is the MMA world rankings, not UFC. But he's uh, he's in the two hundred five division in that on that ranking system, and I do remember after his uh, missed weight. I know he wants that rematch with the Italian stallion Marvin Vittori, but. I don't either. And if he does, I like that see that fight at two hundred five. Um, I, I wouldn't mind seeing Paulo, um, Paulo Costa and Jamal Hill. I think Ozemir is also free right now. Ozemir has been uh, falling out. Oh, he is. Hey, run that. That's a good test right there. Yeah. I think anywhere in that um That's the dude that always be like time, right? Time. No, no time. time. Yeah. yeah, no time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He had I don't know. He had a, a well, he had a really good um opening to his career too. He was bodying everybody. And then he ran yeah, into I think He's on a little bit of a better standing than Dominic Gray is right now too, isn't he? After he fought DC, man, it was like a tough outing. For him oh no! Like that, man. DC changed. He game. lost his last two. DC changes a lot of people's lives. Yeah. DC changed Max Holloway's life. He made him a champion just by sneezing. He certainly <laughs> did. <laughs> he certainly did. Bless the world with Max Holloway. He did. Speaking of DC, Anthony Pettis did it. He's, he did well. Oh, yeah. He, he was the one that had to take the beating. For that shine. Max, Bro. yeah. Dog. We won't uh, talk about Max. Let's, let's keep going with our uh, guys right now. So, Jamal Hill, Ozemir? Ozemir Reyes is the greatest matchups for me. I, I'm like I'll put my I'll throw my ring my hat in the ring with Costa, and um, do I like I like to see him welcome Costa to 205, or yeah, who's the mirror? Sounds good. I mean, I, all of them sound good. I don't see a problem at all with Reyes. I just think that Reyes is probably that's a tough fight for him too because he's it's another. Really good striker, and he's been getting knocked out. All right, so uh, before we get to the next card coming up, I'm not going to lie to you guys. It's not looking pretty on the card. I don't know too many people. I want I want to get you guys' opinions on the 205 division. Is it stale? Is it? Not a lot of action. What is it? I I think it's fine. I I also think it's fine too. I think it's fine. Um, it's not. Do you guys think it's like there's not like a lot of events with the top guys at two hundred five? That is, I think that's what we're missing, right? There hasn't been too many events with like the top two hundred five guys in a while. Think about it. 
This was like the first one in a while. We haven't had one since what Jan versus Glover. Right. Well, mm-hmm. yeah, and, and and now what when when Blahovich and Glover, we had to change the title. Yeah, that was uh, incredible. Right, and um, you still that division still you still got Yuri Prohashka. You know, you still got Alexander Rakic. You still you're still looking at Tiago Santos, Anthony Smith. They're notable contenders. I feel like the top five is legitimate in that in in that two hundred five division. And there's obviously some guys like Hill and Craig and um, you know to fill out that those up and comers. I think two hundred five is just fine. I, I do too. I think two hundred five is fine because I think the top ten is still an interesting top ten. I mean, even the top eleven because Paul Craig. I'm still really big on Paul Craig right now, and I think that he's going to make a rise soon. But. I think it's fine. I think the biggest problem that 205's had is a lot of their big stars have taken a step back in activity. Like, Anthony Smith was fighting every other month for a while. Same with Dominic Reyes was trying to fight as much as possible. Santos, before he blew out both of his knees, was trying to fight as much as possible. And now they're at a point where a lot of those big names just aren't getting on the fight cards as often anymore. So they're not getting the shine they should. And they're definitely not talking about Glover as a champion nearly as much as they talked about previous champions for 205. Isn't this fight to come up? Like, is it May? Mm-hmm. And all I know is Yuri and Merrick. Those two are some dudes. Clover, old man power, he might get it done. If he beats Yuri, bro, he could retire and be like, wow, I did it. Mark disappeared. We lost Mark. But like I was saying, if Yuri loses to Glover, he can retire. Like straight up, bro. Glover would have won the title from a top contender. And defeated the guy that everybody thought was going to beat him. And he's got nothing else left to prove. He can retire. What do you feel? Uh, I like that. Like, walk off into the sunset. Yeah, he can literally it. go home. But, I mean, I think I feel like he looks like he has some gas left in the tank. Like, he has he had, like, a bit of a resurgence in the last, you know, couple of years. And that's why I picked him to the beat Blahovich. I mean, if you go back and look at the podcast when we covered that card, I took him. I took um, I took Glover in that matchup, and I, like I said, I feel like he's. I like taking the guys who are surging. Like, is there some something about people that have a rough patch and then they kind of figure it out? I think he's simplified it. Like he's it went back to what was what made him good. He got back to his wrestling, mixing it up, and not relying so much on his. Boxing and knocking people out. So, um, with that being said, it's a tall task with fucking Prashka, dog. <laughs> I don't think he's. I don't really see him pulling that one off. Man, headbutt, uh, headbutt, punch. That's how he block. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, Taking a- I'm not gonna lie to you. This upcoming card, this coming weekend, bro. I know a few names on here. I know that does not mean it's a bad card. No. All I and know wh- is this is like a bloodbath waiting to happen. Well, I will say this. On the prelims, my boy Terrence McKinney's fighting, and I picked him as fighter. fighter. He, was, he was my fighter of the year last year. So, I want debut of the year last year. So, I'm excited about that one. He got Faraz Zayim. That should be a good fight. Um, maybe, but we'll see. And the main card, on, you're right. Up. You for, you forgot about Rongzu <laughs> or whatever that dude's name is. <laughs> Wait, is he, he on this card? Yeah, he's the main event of the prelims. But oh, so you know they they put their names backwards. Oh, it's yeah. it's wrong. Yeah, I did. Yeah, they did. And they did yeah. Zurong. 
That should be a good uh, Ignacio. We got, uh, yeah, that should be a good one. That's I like that. Like I'm saying, the prelims. That's about it. Main yeah, card, prelims. Main card, I've seen these names before. I've seen them fight before. I don't know. Man. Yeah. Misha Serkinoff is uh, at middleweight now. I know. He mm. dropped down, right? Yeah. And then uh, Bobby, Gr- Bobby Green, dog. Wait, what, wait, what? wait, wait, wait. Okay. Before we get there, anything else you guys want to say about the main card? We got a mystery fighter in Armin Petrozan versus Gregory Rodriguez. Mm-hmm. He's mystery unlocked. It's mystery. <laughs> Not unlocked yet. We got Armin <laughs> Darkurian at lightweight fighting Joe Alvarez, number 13 versus unranked guy. Mm-hmm. 13 at light, lightweight's point. good. Somebody's proven the point. We got G. Yan. Him against Priscilla Cochera. First of all, I do want to say something about that one. Isn't Priscilla the one that did all those eye gouges last time? Like, I don't even know why she's still a fighter in this organization at this point. Because if, if she's who I think that she is... I need to look that up real quick, actually, before I say too much. She was doing the Ric Flair? She was doing the just straight up eye gouging. Like, she was getting choked out and just scraping out them eyes. Like, trying to Michael Bisbing her. Oh, was it her Jillian Robertson fight? Yeah. Yeah, I don't... That was just nasty. Like, she was purposely doing it, and when she was asked about it... Uh, after the fight, she was just kind of like, sorry, not sorry, for blatantly cheating and scraping out her eyes. Unbelievable. Right. All right, so Misha... What's her name? Sir Kurnoff? Sir, yeah, Sir Kurnoff. Versus Wellington Herman? Wellington. Wellington, yeah. Should be a good yeah. matchup. Intriguing matchup at middleweight. But then we got mm-hmm. the catchweight bout. I don't understand why it's at catchweight. But I do understand why it's at catchweight. I understand Bobby Green just made weight a week ago. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Ten days. And he's probably like, yeah, bro, I don't want to cut down again. I want to eat. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he probably put on his weight from uh, the day after. I was like, man, I don't want to go through that again. <laughs> don't torture me again, boss. Bro, I'll fight he's him, o- I'll fight him though. He's opening up as a, a minus. Uh, they, they got him favorite. They got him at minus three sixty five. It's gotta be a fucking mistake. Am I seeing this right? Are you seeing no this way? Right? There's no way. No, there's no way. That's right. That's can't. That can't be right. Are you guys seeing this? Should it be? That's got to be right. It should be reverse. reverse. Got to be reverse. Yeah. There's no way he's a minus three sixty five favorite. This is how you know it's wrong. Bobby Green is ranked number four. Yeah, it has them both at number four. I was like, yeah. What is going on here? Dana, let your boy run the UFC website, please. Asking. Get somebody to run this shit. Please. Please. <laughs> Dana, yes. Please. I got you, bro. Please let your boy run the UFC web. Yes, it's it's goofy right now. <laughs> and not I would right imagine now. It's, it's been goofy. I would imagine it's flipped, though. I yeah. think it's flipped. I yeah. think uh, Makachev is minus 280 and But going no. into this matchup. No, I think it's just naturally flipped. Like Islam's minus three sixty five. Oh, you think? Okay, okay, okay. Not it's just plus, flipped. Not plus. Okay, okay. No, Islam's minus three sixty five, and then Bobby okay. Green's plus two eighty. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes I, sense. I gave Bobby Green plus three sixty five. 
Islam well, then minus two eighty. I mean, either nah. Way, Islam got to be a bigger favorite than that, though. He has to be. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We'll, we'll discuss this now. So, we'll discuss this now. <laughs> so uh, green, like his hands, proven. Islam's hands to me have not been proven. His grappling, I see it, but in my opinion, it's not like the second coming of a dude like Daniel Cormier. Like I've yet to see it. I don't see his grappling that dominant. I mean, it's good. It's great. But it's not like Habib at all. Bobby Green's hands, he's got them things. So we'll see what happens. But until I'm proven otherwise, Islam has to show me his hands are great. Because if he just takes down Bobby Green and wrestles him and does all that, okay. Whatever. <laughs> Mark? I love this matchup. I'm always going to watch a Bobby Green fight. I'm actually more excited for it now than I was before because I just love Bobby Green. And, yeah, his hands are the truth. I think a stand-up matchup between these two is all Bobby Green. Bobby Green does have great takedown defense, but that takedown defense is normally towards single legs, doubles, and that's not his Islam's game. He more wants to take you against the cage and has some slick trips and judo throws. So I don't know. It's an interesting, intriguing matchup. I think Bobby Green can pull this off, but it's going to be a tough match. And shout out to him. Uh, with the weight cut thing, I do want to say that I'm glad it's at a catch weight because if you want to run back uh, Tony Ferguson cutting weight twice in a couple of weeks and – having the show up that he did. We don't need that again. Nah. Islam looked good in his uh in his stand up ability. And pretty much I mean every fight he's been in so far. Not um elite by any stretch, but not deficient. He didn't look like he struggled. Like if you remember Khabib early he looked like a fish out of water in the stand-up department. You know what I mean? Um, but he was like such a ace in the hole when it comes to grappling that it didn't matter. And then as he got, as he progressed throughout his career, Habib ended up looking better and better and better with his stand-up ability and his wrestling stayed par for the course, if not got better. And like I think Islam is kind of a, like a balance between both uh, Zabit and and Khabib, where he has some he has stand ups good, not super flashy, but his grappling's legit. So I feel like this it will be a tough test for Bobby Green, and given that short notice, might be even more tough. I'm not sure if the advantage will be tipped toward Bobby Green because it's short notice. Is a different opponent entirely, but if he can, if this becomes a kickboxing match, uh, I'm really, I'm really curious to see what, how, how this plays out. If it's if Islam cannot get Bobby Green to the ground and it becomes a straight just kickboxing match, what does that look like? That's what I'm, I'm curious. Saying. Yeah, that's saying. the only yeah, right. They always said. I mean, and better I, hands than Habib is obvious. He does. I'll agree with that statement. But Habib's yeah. hands weren't a high bar to surpass. Well, if you look at, like, the El Quinta fight, Habib definitely looked way better than he did in, like, the uh, Gleison T-Ball fight. You know what I mean? Like, if you look at, his, if you look at Habib, Habib's stand-up in the Gleison T-Ball fight, I mean, he looked like... Um, what's what's a, like Ben Askren? But then, if you look at uh, the Ally Quinta fight, he had a legitimate jab. He had a legitimate um, one-two. Yep. Like he, right? He looked crisp in his boxing in the Al fight, and Al could box. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's not like um, he was up against a scrub and just looked good against a no-name guy. He looked good against someone who actually won the title in that fight, believe it or not. But he looked good in, uh, he looked good in the stand-up, Habib did, in that fight. So to say that his um, – to say that Islam striking is better, is definitely better um, at this point in their careers. Because this is still early for Islam. And I would say he's already ahead of the curve, a curve when it comes to just pure striking. But is he as dominant as a, a grappler as Habib? Like, Habib was relentless when it came to getting takedowns. And Islam has shown the ability to not only grapple effectively, but he gets the finish. He's been finishing from his uh, takedowns, like so. I don't know. We'll see if he can if he, if he can get Bobby to the ground. I'm 100 percent sure that's his game plan. Like he's not gonna deviate and all of a sudden become a kickboxer. But if Bobby can um, keep the distance, keep the angles, and make to make it to where and force it to be a kickboxing match, then it'll get interesting. The thing with Islam that I've noticed. His strength and his power with grappling isn't the same as the dude, but his technique and his transition to get to the submission is very nice. It's, it's on par. It's mm -hmm. really good. So that might be the one thing that's different between the two. It's like Islam got that technique and like transitions and everything to get you there. But his strength and like holding you down and like putting you there and like no you're not moving and now you're getting either pounded out or subbed. It's not the same as the dude, but it's there with the technique and the transition. What will Bobby Green be able to do it? You stop him from getting to the ground and keep it standing. If that happens, oh my god, that's gonna prove a point though. Islam could like box with Bobby Green. Yeah. If Islam comes out and boxes with Bobby Green, even if he gets outboxed and loses the fight by decision, but stands up with him and like keeps keeps up, I'll be very impressed with him and I'll I'll give him all the credit that he deserves. But I don't Although I think that he's a great prospect and I think he will be a title challenger very soon, I think he's getting a little carried away with the comparisons to Khabib. It's not him though, man. Uh, well, it's, I mean, his, it's his whole crew. It, it doesn't help that DC says it, Habib says it, then all the media says it because they said it. You know, it... I do think that for AKA, it is his time, and I think he will challenge for the title, and he might even be champion at some point. I think a matchup between him and Oliveira is a very interesting one, but he still has some things to prove to me. You know what? When you think about that whole camp, like he's not a trash talker. He's not flashy. So they have to promote like that. They have to promote him as like this unstoppable force. And that's what Khabib was, or Khabib was. So, like, they have to do that. Um, so, I don't blame them for the tactics. But, um, you know, like I said before, I'll say it again, until it's proven to me, I don't give any of those guys with steam, like, an automatic championship just for putting wins together. You got to show me that you can do it in the top five. And right now, unfortunately, Bobby Green isn't a top five opponent. This isn't someone. Bobby Green is saving this card. He came in on last minute notice to save this card, and um, I'm I'm actually I'm pulling for him. I hope Bobby Green can pull it off. You know, like so, this would be his first first main event, right? So, no. What a victory! Does that you sure Bobby Green in top five? Does he like? Oh yeah. Does he like pass the whole fifteen, top ten, all that, and does that put him in his top five? 
Bro, if Bobby Green somehow wins this fight, I mean, especially if it's like not not controversial, if he like, like comes out, and just, let's say, he's, yeah, let's say he ally quits him, like he knocks him the fuck out, yeah, yeah he, he's going to fucking shoot to the top five for sure. He's gonna take, he gonna take uh, his spot. You gotta it's remember, kind of, Bobby Green used to be ranked number six in the world. I just don't remember him fighting a, a, a five round main event. I think it's his first yeah. one. Can you can you can you look it up and see? I'm gonna like, look it up. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure he has because he's currently unranked. Currently. Right. Like I mean, yeah, he's currently unranked. Yes. Tomorrow, tomorrow he might be ranked like 12 or something, 13, 14. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just for mm-hmm. this this fight. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, Islam's number four, and it's not like he's gonna skip over Darius. Broke his ankle. Corey, who's number two. Gaethje was probably going to fight Charles. Isn't that fight confirmed? Gaethje and Charles? In May? That's the uh, Brazilian card, right? They're oh. trying to make it in Brazil. It hasn't been confirmed that it will be in Brazil. Well, either way, Islam's number four. So, if Bobby Green beats Islam, I imagine they'll promote Chandler up to four and put Bobby Green at five, and they'll move back Islam down and they'll promote everybody else in front of him. Something like that. You know what I'm saying? They'll do something. Mm-hmm. Like that. If that happens, that's that's spectacular. Because this dude will just like just jump right back into the rankings without being ranked. Unless they rank him tomorrow. You know, I don't know what takes him so long, bro. Like, Fight happens on Saturday. You got Sunday, then Monday. And you put out the names at like 5 p.m. Eastern and stuff for the rankings. It's a small sport. But either way, you guys ready to call it? We can call it. I think maybe he was co main events before then because I can't find it right now. Yeah, I just can't remember. I can't remember a time when he did a five round main event. He might have had a main event, not a five round main event. I think this is his first five round main event. Because I, I don't think, know. I can't. I can't remember him being the main event. But um, shout out to Bobby Green for getting the spotlight, and hopefully this means a big payday if he and if he gets a, gets the win, if he can pull it off, that'd be huge. Um, little side note, little sidebar. Bro, I was thinking about this for a while. Um, I was talking to Kevin. We were, we were talking about uh, some what ifs. And I was like, what if Daniel Cormier had a, uh, like a strength and conditioning coach or a dietitian and he was able to fight at 185? How would he look? Amazing. Bro, you know what? I, I, I saw Daniel Cormier versus Kale Sanderson in wrestling at 185. And that's a whole different man. Have you seen uh have you seen him? Yes. Yo, you saw how ripped he was? Bro, DC was ripped at 85. He was wearing I'm, the uh the two piece, right? The little uh he had the uh the two The things. singlet. The singlet, the singlet bro. It was a single. It's like mm-hmm. you know what I'm talking about? Like the uh thing like that. I don't think it's a singlet when it's just because of one strap. I think it's the oh. whole Yeah, it's one, the, a one fucking, piece. Yeah, he had the one piece. <laughs> he had the yeah. fucking overalls. Bro, he uh, that was a that was a really uh like I don't, I don't think Kale Sanderson lost a college match in his career, and that was the finals for like the, the NCAA title for one eighty five, and bro Cormier made one mistake. He could have won that match. He made one mistake like late, where he had Kale down, and he's getting ready to pin him, and he kind of like let up, and Kale took him down and got. Two points. What? Cormier at one eighty five would be a monster. Yeah. Cormier yeah. probably natural weight class is one eighty five. Because I mean, even at lightweight, in his, even at lightweight, he was. And like heavyweight, you knew he could lose a lot of weight. He looked like he was a heavyweight, and he's too short for both of those weight classes. You mean like heavyweight, right? Yeah, light heavyweight. Sorry, I mean, he had to cut off his legs to make lightweight. Like, like he had to cut off one. Leg. I think he could do it. 
<laughs> we talking about yo. We talking about he needs. We talking about one of the most dedicated men in in, in the whole Don't fight. In whole, yeah. right. This dude's a legend in fight sports, and we talking about he needed dedication and a dietitian and all that just to make eighty five. For him to make fifty five, that'll take like he died, bro. Got it, bro. Got it. No, he just he he just gotta cut off his arm like Nick Newell. No Popeyes. Be fine. No Popeyes. <laughs> All right, man. On that note, man, we're we we're, we're, we're gonna call it. If you like our content, wait. If you like our content, for sure, don't be afraid to like and subscribe. You can hit us up in the comments. You can also hit us up at Ashy Knuckles MMA on Twitter. I am B Woods. That is Mark G and my boy Mosey P. Holla at us. Zip it up. Zip it out. Zip it out.